This is a good one. Is it possible to access the server by hacking the IoT hardware? Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> so so this is like sometimes sometimes this is the whole reason why you're hacking on an IoT target, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say we've got this IoT device and it has Wi-Fi or Ethernet or something, and it communicates out to a cloud server over over the web over HTTP inside of a TLS, you know, connection, right? And all, that might that might be the same API that the mobile app uses. It might be the same API that some of the web the, the web app uses. But you might learn about API endpoints that are mm -hmm. only ever used by the IoT device, right? Yeah. So again in terms of whether it's a pen test or whether it's bug bounty like but but like maybe even like let's let's kind of stick in that bug bounty mindset bug bounty oftentimes is all about finding new scope finding green yes. pastures yeah where no one else has tread so there's this barrier to entry which is reverse engineering the hardware device so like, let's say there's like an, a really simple idor uh, vulnerability that exists in some web API, but mm -hmm. the device is the only device, like, like the device is the only thing that uses it. The web app doesn't use it. The mobile app doesn't use it, right? So there's this huge barrier to entry. Like all you have to do to find this theoretical vulnerability is to know what the API endpoint is. Yes. So the only thing in your way is, you know, dumping the firmware off the chip, reverse engineering it, and figuring out what those API endpoints are. So yes, oftentimes, this is a very long roundabout way to answer the question, like yes, oftentimes you are going to find vulnerabilities in traditional web assets yes. that, that you would only find through the device. Yeah. So, and I'll add a caveat, if you're pen testing, you need to be very careful that that is in scope, right?